clap for Jesus. Clap for Jesus. What we show when we get a girl for Jesus. What we show when we get a girl for Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Tunaenda sasa kumsifu Mungu. Hallelujah. Be ready, be ready, be ready, be ready. Hallelujah. Hey. Makofi kwa Yesu.
Heavenly Father, we bow down at the Lordship of your word this morning. We pray that, Lord, you're going to minister to us. Have your way in our lives. Have your way, God, in our churches. Have your way in our nation, O King of Glory. We surrender all unto you. Be done to us according to your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let me take this opportunity this, uh, this morning and be able to welcome you in our service. So feel blessed wherever you're joining us from. And I'd like to tell you that this is Nairobi Christian Center. Uh, we are located at the Eastlands. Bahati Estate. Bahati Estate. These are Pentecostal Church, a Bible-believing church. So anytime you have an opportunity, we'd like you to visit us. And uh, we have four services. Our first service begins at 8 9, And then we have a half an hour break. And then from 9.30 to 10.30 We have the second service And then from 11 to uh, 12 Kutoka saa tano hadi saa sita. We have the third service. Tuko na ibada ya tatu. And then from uh, 12.30 to 1.30. Kutoka saa sita na nusu hadi saa saba na nusu. We have the fourth service. Tuko na ibada ya nini. So anytime you have an opportunity. Kwa hivu wakati wote kuna nafasi. Join us, let's come and worship God together. Ungana nasi tumabudu mungu pamoja. And we thank God that God has given us a great praise and worship team. Tunashukuru mungu kwa sababu ametupa mda umzuru wa maabudu. But when we come together and worship God together. Ya kuwa tulikuja pamoja na kuwabudu. You can feel the presence of God. Tunaishu. So may God bless our praise and worship team. Amen. Today I want us to look at the word of the Lord. And we are going to look at the book of uh, Psalms chapter number 118. And this is a Psalm of David. So he begins by saying in verse number 1, O Lord, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, his mercies endures forever. Verse number 2. Let Israel now say, his mercies endures forever. Let the house of Aaron now say, His mercies endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord now say, His mercies endures forever. I called on the Lord in distress, and the Lord answered me, and He set me in a broad uh, place. Verse number six. 
and the Lord is on my side, I will not fear. The Lord is on our side, we are not going to fear. The theme of my message this morning, it is that God is on our side. We should not fear. So David, uh, going through a time of distress, he came to the knowledge of realization that he is not alone but God is on his side. And this is the reason that gave him uh, the confidence to know that he should not fear. So these are uh, words of uh, encouragement when we are going through crisis, times of crisis or seasons of uncertainty or seasons of fear or seasons of panic. The experiences that we are going through in the world right now, you will see that many people have feared. And many people have panicked. And many people are anxious. Uh, they don't know about tomorrow. But I want to let you know that tomorrow lies in the hands of the Lord. So David is reminding us that knowing that God is on our side, there is no reason to panic or to fear. Even today or this morning, no matter what we are facing, having the knowledge that the Lord is on our side, this gives us the assurance and the confidence not to fear anything. So we should not panic it shall be well in Jesus name let me begin by saying my first point that I want to address today is knowing that the Lord is on our side I know that I know that God is on my side uh, when many people are teaming up, you will see that everybody goes for the best team. So knowing that we are with God, we know that we have the best team. We know that we are an unforbidable team that cannot be defeated. We know that we are a team that is, is going to, to, to win the battle. Why? Because God is on our side. So what the Psalmist is saying that when you are teamed up with God no matter what comes on your way no matter what challenges comes on your way you know that at the end of the day you are going to come out victoriously. You are going to be a for we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. Kwa sababu sisi ni zaidi ya washindi katika Yesu. At times that like these. Ya kuwa nyakati kama hizi. When many people wakati watu wengi have feared of panic. Wameogopa ama wameofia. When many people have distorted thoughts. Wengine wameharibika kimawazo. Thoughts that are that are that are shifting us to a wrong direction. Mawazo ambayo yanatupeleka kusiko kuzuri. And uh, in life I've met people and I've heard people say that uh, when, I, when I, um, I have teamed up with so and so when I have teamed up maybe with a pastor or when my boss is in my team or oh, I have heard people who say that, uh, if I can only know the president or if the president is able to know me if I can only know the governor or if I can only know the MP or whoever I know that things are going to work out for me I want to bring you a word that is quite different things don't work out because of who you know Things work out when you know that you know that you know that you know God. It is only God who can change things in our lives. It is only God who can make things work out perfectly. 
Ni Mungu tu ambaye anasababisha mambo yawe sawa. So knowing God. Kwa hivyo kumjua Mungu. Jesus the assurance. Inatupa uhakikisho that we are going to be victors. Ya kuwa tutakuwa washindi. That we are going to come out uh, to come out victorious. Tutaenda kuibuka washindi. No matter what we face. Haijalishi nini tunapitia. So, David is bringing an understanding to us today. Kwa hivyo Daudi analeta uelewa kwetu leo. Knowing God is the greatest thing in life. Ni jambo lizuri katika maisha. Having a personal relationship with God. Kuwa na uhusiano na Mungu. Being close to God. Kuwa karibu na Mungu. Not being close to politicians. Si kuwa karibu na wanasiasa. You can be close to a politician. Unaweza kuwa karibu na mwanasiasa. At the end of the day, lakini baada ya siku, you are disappointed. Umeaibika. But you never be close to God. Lakini ukiwa na karibu na Mungu, and be disappointed. Hautaaibika. God knows how to come through for his people. Mungu anajua jinsi ya kuwashindania watu wake. So it is good to know God. Kwa hivyo ni vizuri kumjua Mungu. And it is good to be close to God. Na ni vizuri kuwa karibu na Mungu. So David kwa hivyo Daudi the servant of the Lord mtumishi wa Mungu he gives us an understanding anatupa kuelewa that when we are known by God ya kuwa tukijulikana na Mungu and when we go know God na wakati tunamjua Mungu that when God is on our side wakati Mungu yuko upande wetu no matter what comes on the way haijalishi nini inakuja that we are going to be victorious ya kuwa tutakuwa washindi the book of Psalms chapter number 18 kitabu cha Zaburi 18 It is serving as a reminder Inatukumbusha For 40 years the children of Israel Kwa miaka 40 wana wa Israeli They lived a life of wandering in the wilderness Waliishi maisha ya kuangaika nyikani For 40 years they were moving each and every day Kwa miaka 40 walisonga kila siku But they were not heading anywhere Lakini hawakuwa wanaenda mahali Even if they knew that God was on their side Hata kama walijua Mungu alikuwa upande wao But they lived like people who didn't know that God was on their side Lakini waliishi kama watu ambao hawajui For 40 years it was a journey of panic kwa miaka 40 ilikuwa ni maisha ya kuhofia. For 40 years it was a life of uncertainty. Kwa miaka 40 ilikuwa ni miaka ya kutokujua. For 40 years it was a time of anxiety. Ilikuwa na miaka ya shauku. But David gives us a solution to anxiety. Lakini Daudi anatupa suluhu ya kutokujua. He gives us a solution to seasons of panic. Ya ku anatupa suluhu ya nyakati za shida. That allowing or knowing that God is on our side. Kumruhusu ama kujua Mungu yuko upande wetu. This gives us the confidence not to fear. Hii inatupa hakikisho ya kutokuogopa. So even today. Kwa hivyo hata leo. I want to say that we are going to come out stronger out of this uh, the season that we are going through. Nakutaka niseme hata wakati huu tutaibika washindi. We are going to come out stronger and more mature. Tutakuwa wenye nguvu na pia tutakuwa wakubwa zaidi. There is a reason and a purpose why the Lord has allowed us to go through what we are going through today. Kuna sababu ambayo Mungu ameruhusu kila kitu Leo. Just like the way that he allowed the children of Israel to go through the, uh, the years 40 years of wandering. Kama jinsi aliwaruhusu wana Israeli wapitie miaka 40 ya kuangaika. Finally out of after those 40 years of wandering. Na baadaye baada hiyo miaka. We see the generation that came out of that that wandering. Tunaona kile kizazi ambacho kilizaliwa wakati. It was a generation that was stronger and more mature. Kilikuwa ni kizazi chenye nguvu. So I want to say that we are going to get out of this uh, situation that we are in. Nataka niseme ya kwa tutaibu katika hii hali more mature wakati tumekuwa in the things of god tumekuwa katika mambo ya kimungu we are going to get out more stronger tutakuwa wenye nguvu zaidi the bible says in the book of deuteronomy biblia inasema katika kitabu cha kumbukumbu deuteronomy chapter number 20 verse number 1 to 4 kumbukumbu 21 hadi 4 that god is speaking to the children of israel ya kuwa mungu ananena wana wana israeli and he tells the children of israel na anawaambia that here o israel today that you are going into battle against your enemies but do not be afraid or panic or be terrified for the lord your god who brought you out of egypt will be with you he is on your side don't give up for victory is coming amen hallelujah amen. so god is giving the children of israel an assurance mungu anawapa wana wa israeli hakikisho that he is together with them ya kuwa yuko pamoja na wao they should not panic hawafai kuogopa they should not fear hawafai kuofia david also says in the book of psalm chapter number 124 daudi anasema katika kitabu cha zaburi 124 that if the lord have not been on our side ya kuwa kama mungu hayuko upande wetu if the lord have not been on our side kama mungu hajakuwa upande wetu the devil could have destroyed us 
If the Lord could not have been on our side, Kama Mungu hange kuwa wetu. the devil could have swallowed us alive. Hai. If it was not for the Lord being on our side, Kama sio Mungu kuwa wetu. the waves and the storms, na ile nyika. they could have struck us out, yange kuwa struck us down, but then God that he was on our side, Lakini Mungu if wetu. the Lord was not on our side, Kama Mungu the situation that we were going through, hali it was a hopeless or helpless situation. Ni hali aina msaada. If it was not God who is on our side, Kama sio Mungu wetu. whatever the devil had intended, Kili adui we could have been destroyed. But I thank God Lakini na that Mungu. God has been on our side. Ya kuwa Mungu that wetu. God is fighting our battles. Mungu and we are going to get out of this more stronger. Na tutakuwa, tutakuwa zaidi. We are going to get out of this more victorious. Tutakuwa na ushindi zaidi. For God is on our side. Kwa sababu Mungu yuko upande wetu. Knowing that God is on our side. Tukijua Mungu yuko upande wetu. Having an understanding ukikuwa na uelewa that the Lord is fighting the battle for us. Yakuwa Mungu anatupigania. Today we have to learn Leo inatubidi tusome that whatever you are going through yakuwa yale tunapitia. You may go, be going through a tough time. Uende unapitia wakati mgumu. But thank God that he's on your side. Lakini shukuru Mungu yuko upande wako. Today you may not have much. Uende hauna mingi. You may not have money. Uende hauna pesa. You may not have uh, employment. Uende hauna kazi. But thank God he's on your side. Lakini shukuru Mungu yuko upande wako. Hallelujah. Amen. You know I've looked at life. Nimeangalia maisha. I'm trying to uh, really understand. Na najaribu kuelewa. What life is. Maisha ni because you see that many times we have valued material things Kwa sababu unaona wakati mwingine tuna vitu vya dhamana instead of valuing God badala ya kumdhamini Yesu and you know material things can only bring a, a one sided uh, satisfaction no unaona vitu vya huku duniani vinaenda kuleta utoshelezaji wa hapa but tu. when you have God you are fully satisfied lakini ukiwa na Mungu umetosheleka vizuri godliness and contentment is a great gain kuwa na Mungu na ukuo umetosheleka ni kitu kizuri God is a great gain kuwa na Mungu ni kitu kizuri putting God first weka Mungu kwanza in all that you do kwa mambo yote it is a great gain ni kitu kizuri the bible says that seek ye first the kingdom of god biblia inasema kutafuta ufalme and kwanza and righteousness na mambo yote and all these other things vitu vyote they are additional zinaongezewa so today when you see how people are striving each and every day ukiona jinsi watu wanangangana kila siku putting more effort kuweka jitihada zaidi on what we can acquire kwa kile ambacho tunaweza pata on the material things we can acquire kwa vitu ambavyo tunaweza kuwa navyo but at times comes lakini nyakati zinakuja when we realize wakati unagundua no matter what you have acquired ya kuwa haujalishi nini uko nacho it does not make sense aileti maana it is of no value aisaidii hallelujah Amen. So we have to learn how to value God. Tunafaa tujivunze kumdhamini Mungu. Putting the first thing first. Weka vitu vya kwanza kwanza. And God is number 1. Na Mungu ndiye wa kwanza. Putting God number 1 in Kwe, our priority. Weka Mungu wa kwanza katika maisha yetu. I want to bring us to the book of Esther. Nataka tuende kitabu cha Esther. And we look at the story of Esther. Na tuone hadithi ya Esther. And we see how this story comes out. Na tunaona jinsi that uh, Esther she's an ordinary girl. Ya kuwa Esther alikuwa msichana wa kawaida. Esther she's a slave. Alikuwa ni mtumwa. Esther she was a, she was she had come from a village. Alikuwa ametokea kijiji. Esther she didn't have uh, expensive clothes. Hakuwa na nguo za dhamana. Esther she didn't have expensive perfume. Hakuwa na mafuta ya dhamana. Esther she didn't have expensive lotion. Hakuwa na yale manukato ya dhamana. But you see lakini unaona Esther having the confidence of knowing God Jinsi wakati Esther alikuwa na ujasiri wa kumjua Mungu Knowing that God is on her side Akijua Mungu yuko upande wake You will see that when uh, the king wanted to marry a queen Wakati mfalme alitaka kuoa malkia And they were looking for a queen Na walikuwa wanamtafuta malkia And all the beautiful ladies were brought Na wanawake wote wa rembo ile They were ready Walikuwa waliekwa mbele Na unaona that because Esther was chosen by God number 1 Ya kuwa Esther alikuwa amechaguliwa na Mungu She had pleased the heart of God Alikuwa ameupendeza moyo wa Mungu And that's why Na ndipo sa She was picked by the king Alichaguliwa na mfalme So when we please the heart of God Kwa hivyo tukipendeza moyo wa Mungu When we seek first the things of God Tukitafuta mambo yaliyo ya Mungu That no matter what we want in life Ya kuwa 
There will be additional. Kuna kuwa na vitu zaidi. We see God giving Esther a greater favor. Tunaona Mungu akimpendezea Esther. You know in our current uh, in our current day. Unajua nyakati hizi. Yaani tunasema Esther ni msichana ambaye alikuwa anavaa mitumba. She was a lady maybe uh, who was wearing second hand clothes. She was a girl who didn't have anything. Halik- or there was no one who was on her side but God was on her side. Halikuwa dada ambaye hakuwa na kitu lakini Mungu alikuwa upande wake. And finally, na mwisho, I want to say also when we look at the, at the story of David, tukiangalia hadithi ya Daudi, and seeing how David was chosen by God. Tukiona jinsi Daudi alichaguliwa na Mungu. We see that David was brought from nowhere. Daudi alileta kutoka mahali popote. And God selected him. Na Mungu akamchagua. Being uh, known by God. Akiwa anajulikana na Mungu. that God is on your side. Akijua Mungu yuko upande wake. No matter where you are today. Haijalishi uko wapi leo. David came all the way from the forest looking after the sheep of his father. Daudi alitoka kulisha kondoo. Today you may be in Madhare. Uenda huko Madhare. And you you feel like you're forgotten. Na unahisi kuwa umesahulika. Today you may be in Bukuru kwa Jenga. Uenda huko Mukuru wa Jenga. And you think that you are not known by anybody. Na unahisi haujulikani na mtu. Today you may be at Kibera. Uenda huko Kibera. And you feel like you're not safe. Na unahisi kuwa hauko salama. Today you may be at in, in any estate of Islands. Unaweza kuwa mahali popote Islands. And you feel like uh, no one cares. Na unahisi kuwa hakuna mtu anajali. I bring the one who cares. Lakini nataka nileta I want to tell you that when you allow God to be on your side it doesn't matter where you are it doesn't matter which location you are when God is on your side victory is assured allowing God to be on our side no matter what you are going through it doesn't matter even what kind of a position you hold nafasi gani I know there are some who are messengers Najua wengine ambao ni wajumbe I know there are some who are cleaners Najua wengine wanasafisha I know there are some who are drivers Najua wengine ni madereva I know there are some who are sweepers Najua wengine wanafagia I know there are some who are mama mboga Najua wengine wanauza mboga It doesn't matter even the salary that you get Haijalishi mshahara unaopata When God is on your side Wakati Mungu yuko upande wako When God is on your side. Wakati Mungu yuko upande wako. You are wako. covered. Umezungukwa. You are well protected. Umezungukwa vizuri. I remember the story of Noah. Nakumbuka hadithi ya Noah. I remember that uh, Noah realized of uh, allowing God to be on his side. Ya kuwa Noah aligundua kumruhusu Mungu kuwa upande wake. The entire family of Noah. Na Noah na jamii yake yote. It was safe from destruction. Alikuwa ameokolewa kutoka kwa kuharibiwa. When other people were dying. Wakati watu wengine walikufa. When other people were destroyed. Wakati watu wengine waliharibiwa. The family of Noah. Ya kuwa jamii ya Nuhu. Survived. Ili kuwa hai. It is because God was on their side. Ni kwa sababu Mungu alikuwa upande wao. Allowing God to be on our side. Kuruhusu Mungu hao upande wetu. When God is on our side. Wakati Mungu yuko upande wetu. Victory is assured. Ushindi unahakikishwa. The book of Ruth chapter number 2. Kitabu cha Ruth mbili. We meet Ruth. Tunakutana na Ruth. And Ruth there is a daughter in law to Naomi. Alikuwa mtoto mkazamwana wa Naomi. The husband of Ruth had died. Na yule mmewe alikuwa amekufa. And we remember that Ruth Ruth and Opa were daughters in law of Naomi. Na tunakumbuka ya kuwa Ruth na Orpha walikuwa wakazamana na Naomi. Opa decided to go back to his own place. Lakini Orpha akarudi kwao. But Ruth said, Na Ruth akasema, "That I'm going to stand with this woman of God." Ya kuwa nitasimama na wewe mtumishi wa Mungu. And your God shall be my God. Ya kuwa Mungu wake atakuwa Mungu wangu. And your people shall be my people. Watu wako watakuwa watu wangu. And we see that Ruth finally she's a widow. Na tunaona Ruth anafiwa na bwanake. But finally, lakini mwisho, God brings a man by the name of Boaz. Mungu anamlete Boaz. It is not because Ruth was attracting from outside. Si kwa sababu Ruth alipendeza kutoka kwa nje. But we look at the character of Ruth. Lakini ukiangalia tabia ya Ruth, standing in the things of faith. Kusimama katika mambo ya imani. Saying that your God shall be my God. Kusema amekuwa Mungu wako ni Mungu wangu. And your people shall be my people. Na watu wako ni watu wangu. So we see when we bring God on our side. Tunaona tukimlete Mungu upande wetu. That victory is a is a sure. Ya kuwa ushindi umehakikishwa. God knows how to fight for his people. Mungu anajua kupigania watu wake. I remember the journey of the children of Israel. Nakumbuka safari ya wana wa Israeli. As they were crossing the Red Sea. Wakati wanavuka ile and the Red Sea was ahead of them. Na ile bahari ilikuwa mbele yao. And there was no way out. Na hakukuwa na njia nyingine. 
but they knew that God was with them. Lakini walijua Mungu yuko nao. They knew that God was on on their side. Walijua Mungu yuko upande wao. I remember even when they were facing the bitter waters in the wilderness. Nakumbuka hata wakinywa maji machungu. When things were not working out. Wakati mambo hayakuwa mazuri. But the children of Israel. Lakini wana wa Israeli. They knew that they knew. Walijua ya kuwa. That God was on their side. Ya kuwa Mungu alikuwa upande wao. The confidence and assurance that come. Ujasiri na hakikisho ambayo inakuja. Even when we are going through bitter waters. Hata wakati tunapitia maji machungu. Even when we are going through moment of crisis. Tukipitia nyakati za shida. When we are going through hard times. Tukipitia wakati mgumu. When we know that God is on our side. Tunajua Mungu yuko upande wetu. Haijalishi maisha ni magumu vipi. No matter what you have gone through. Haijalishi umepitia nini. No matter what kind of a past you have you have experienced. Haijalishi maisha yako yamekuwa vipi. Just like that the experience that the children of Israel had. Kama jinsi wana wa Israeli walikuwa. Experience of bitter waters. Katika maji machungu. But finally. Lakini God made that which was bitter. Mungu alisababisha kilichokuwa kichungu. He made it to be sweet. Yaliyofanya yao mazuri. So I want to say there is a season that is coming. Nataka niseme kuna wakati unakuja. A season that when everything that we have experienced that has been bitter. Wakati kila kitu ambacho tumepitia. That God is going to be turn it to be sweet in our lives. Ya kuwa Mungu atabadilisha yao mazuri. God is going to elevate us from one level to the next level. Mungu atatuinua kutoka nafasi moja hadi nyingine. God is going to move with us. Hataenda kusonga na sisi. In a way that no man can be able to move with you. Kwa njia ambayo mwanadamu hawezi. God is going to take us to places. Mungu atatupeleka katika sehemu. We have never thought or imagined. Ambazo hatujawahi waza. God is going to fight the battle for us. Mungu atatupigania vita. God is going to heal us. Atatuponya. God is going to intervene in each and every situation that we have gone through. Ataingilia katika shida zote. But we have to allow him. Lakini tumruhusu. We have to allow him to be on our side. Tumruhusu hao upande wetu. We have to allow him to fight the battle for us. Tumruhusu atupigania. We have to allow him to come through for us tumruhusu atukuje it all begins with us inaanza na sisi allowing god kumruhusu mungu allowing god kumruhusu mungu no matter what you're going through haijalishi nini unapitia i want to make a prayer with you nataka niombe na wewe you may be going through seasons of bitter waters uende unapitia nyakati ngumu you may be going through tough times uende unapitia wakati but i want to pray with you today lakini nataka niombe na wewe leo i want to believe god together with you nataka tuamini mungu Dear heavenly Father in the name of Jesus. Lord we bow down at the lordship of your word. Father indeed we are going through seasons of bitter waters O king of glory. But we know that you're together with us. We know that you're on our side O king of glory and you're going to give us victory. Victory Lord. Father even during these seasons of corona COVID-19 Lord. We pray that our father you shall take charge O king of glory. We are not going to lose anyone. Father, we cover your people with the blood of Jesus. Lord Jehovah God, their lives are secured. Their lives are protected in Jesus name. You are there. Uenda huko hapo. You want to give your life to God. Unataka kumpa Mungu maisha yako. You want to allow God to be on your side. Unataka kumruhusu Mungu wa upande wako. Nataka kuomba na wewe. Hajalishi unapitia nini? Hajalishi watu wamesema nini? Hajalishi maisha yako ya kale. Ya kuwa Mungu ni Mungu wa mwanzo mpya. Na, 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 na uwezo wa kubadilisha mambo. To pray a simple prayer with you. Nataka tuombe maombe machache. That prayer can change your destiny. Hao maisha yanaweza badilisha. Are you there? Je uko hapo? You're saying pastor. Unasema mchungaji. Allow God. Nataka kumruhusu Mungu. Be on my side. Kuwa upande wangu. Want to be in the same team with God. Nataka kuwa upande mmoja na Mungu. I know that when I'm in the same team with God. Na najua nikiwa na upande mmoja na Mungu. Victory is assured. Ushindi uko nami. I want to pray with you. Nataka kuomba na wewe. Want to give your life to God. Kama unataka kumpa Mungu maisha yako. Lift up your hand wherever you are. Inua mkono wako mahali ulipo. I want to make a prayer of you. Nataka kuomba na yeye. Dear heavenly Father in the name of Jesus, we come before the holy presence. We want to pray for our brothers and sisters, Father all that they have lifted up their hands wherever they are, you know them by name. Father, I pray for a divine intervention, Lord. Father, whatever experience they have gone through, Father, today they have realized, oh God, that they need you. And they need you to be on their side, O okay, King Glory. Father, come through for them and fight their battles. Thank you, Father, for changing their lives, O God. For giving them a new beginning. We cover them with the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we do pray trusting 
I'm believing. Amen. Amen. I want also to take this opportunity. Nataka nichukue hii ruhusa. Are you sick in your body? Je, unaumwa? And you want God to touch you. Unataka Mungu akuguse. You want the Lord in your in your in your life. Unataka Mungu ndani ya maisha yako. You want a divine intervention. Unataka uguswa kiro. I want to pray with you for those who are sick. Nataka niombe na wale ambao ni wagonjwa. Father in the name of Jesus. I want to pray with all that are not feeling well. Whatever the sickness, whatever the infirmity. Lord, I send your word. Your word that touches and heals. I come against the spirit of infirmity. In the name of Jesus, I pray for the healing power of God. Father, let that miracle happen today in Jesus' name. Let your people be healed from whatever sickness or whatever disease. You have given us a name that is above every other name. That at the mentioning of the name of Jesus, every infirmity, every sickness, Father, let them come out in Jesus' name. Father, touch your people, heal them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank Amen. you, Lord. Amen. Bless you. God bless you. Amen. For taking time to hear the word of the Lord. Asante kwa kuchukua wakati kusikia neno la Mungu. All of us to go to another session. Twende katika kipindi chingine. Where we want to give our tithe and offering to God. Tunataka kutoa zaka na sadaka kwa Mungu. God has blessed us with uh, many many blessings. Ya kuwa Mungu amechubariki na baraka nyingi. Count your blessings name them one by one. Hesabu baraka zako uzihesabu kabisa. We are blessed we are alive today. Tumebarikiwa tuko hai leo. God has given us the energy. Tumebarikiwa Mungu ametupa nguvu. We can be able to move. Hii tuweze kutonga. We are blessed that God has given us the ability to talk. Tumepewa uwezo wa kuongea. We are blessed that the Lord has given us the ability to do some few things. Mungu ametupa uwezo wa kufanya mambo. And even those who are going through tough times. Hata wale ambao wanapitia wakati mgumu. There is one thing that God has done in your life. Kuna kitu ambacho Mungu ametenda. We want to come before him. Tunataka kuja mbele za Mungu. Tell him oh Lord we give thanks to you. Tumwambie eh Mungu tunakushukuru. Mungu umetubariki. We bring our tithe and offering to you. Tunalete sadaka na zaka. I want to pray for your offering and Nataka nataka kuombea sadaka yako. Stand up wherever you are. Simama mahali ulipo. I want us to believe God together. Tuamini Mungu pamoja. As we give our tithe to God. Wakati tunamtolea zaka na sadaka. Different ways we normally give our tithe. Tuko na njia tofauti za kutoa. You can give your tithe through the payable number that is a uh, is on your screen. Unaweza toa kupitia ile namba iliyo simu kwako. You can give your tithe through the account number. Unaweza toa pia kupitia account number. And may God richly bless you. Na, na Mungu akubariki. For committing whatever God has given to you and to him. Kwa kujitolea kile ambacho Mungu amekupa kwake. So I want to pray for you. Nataka nikuombee. Dear heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to pray for all those who are giving their tithe and their offering. Lord, I commit them unto you. Father, may you intervene in their situation, O God. Whatever they get hold to do, let it be blessed of you. Father, cover them, protect them, O King of Glory. Father, I want to thank you for their faithfulness in paying or giving their tithe and offering. May you bless them in return, O God. In Jesus' name, we do pray, trusting and believing. Amen. Amen. May God richly bless you. Amen. As we give, we are going to hear a special number. And we are looking forward to see you even in a, on Sunday in church. Uh, we have taken all the precautions. We have made sure that uh, the church is safe. We sanitize. We, we have followed every precaution that we have been given by the expert. So we, are, we know that when you come to church, it is a safe place. God bless you. May he give you a great week in Jesus' name.
Ooh.